2022 was an incredible year for Generation Zero, adding in so many things for us to enjoy, over five massive updates, a huge slew of DLC to add to our gameplay, and some of the biggest efforts in development that we've seen since the game's launch. The effort that the developers of Generation Zero have made this year was massive, and the end result here is one absolutely worth cheering on into 2023. The year started out on an incredibly strong note with the landfall update in February, adding something we've all waited for since the game's launch, a brand new machine. But the team surprised us in a big way and dropped not just one, but two new machines, the Wolf and the Lynx. Two new machines from a new faction, the Soviets, who had been secretly plotting to obtain the Phoenix Code to use for their own nefarious deeds. Up until the start of this year, their activity had been more so in the background of Generation Zero's main plot, secretly working to foil not only Phoenix, but eradicate us in the process too. Real top-notch bad guy stuff there. And so, with this year being the point where the Soviets have finally made their way into the game in a huge way, as a longtime player, it's hella satisfying to finally see. Throughout all of these updates, we've seen some of the most major world revamps so far, and in Landfall we saw the Forest Region and the North Coast Region updated at the same time, adding in tons of revitalized locations to explore. All the world revamps maintain this level of quality to them that is steadily bringing the exploration of the whole game world to an open world experience like none other. The world revamps also brought a ton of lore with them in the form of two new collectibles, a new letter explaining the scenarios of the Resistance and what life in Ostrovik is like post-apocalypse, then the Matryoshka dolls that explain the events of the Soviets landing in Ostertarn. Some of the best lore added to the game so far, and all of which are plotlines I look forward to seeing expanded on as time goes on. Landfall was huge, with the new machines, revamped locations, weapon wheel, a free base expansion, and a paid pack. It really started the year off on such a strong note and gave the momentum needed for a really banging year. Each major update was about a two month wait in between, so then in April, we saw the base assault update adding one of the best open world activities to the game and something I've spent a ton of time enjoying this past year. The base assaults offer some of the best end game loot and something I've always wanted, infinite machine farms. In this update, we also saw a short set of missions expanding on the Soviet plotline with a short story of resistance fighters following the trail of Tatiana. And to top it all off, it also added the concrete structures for base building with a number of Soviet-inspired buildables, offering a late-game expansion to base build. Overall, Base Assault carried that momentum of 2022 greatly, and even though it needed a small hotfix, it was a really solid update expanding the late-game of Generation Zero and giving us a ton of stuff to do. Then in June, we saw an update that I personally haven't been able to agree with, the New Dawn update, and I guess this is a good opportunity to say that even if something gets added that I don't fully enjoy, it's never going to stop my enjoying Generation Zero as a whole. In New Dawn, we saw the addition of two new NPCs, Pontus and Therese. In my opinion, Therese doesn't match the tone of the game very well. Her nature and character design just isn't the type of character that would survive an apocalypse like this alone, in my opinion. Pontus is chillin', and I think he's an okay addition. If it had have just been a soldier guiding you through the early stages, I think New Dawn would have been okay. But being guided by a plucky, naive, and kinda innocent person that has zero combat capabilities, it just doesn't jive with the more grim atmosphere of Generation Zero. Of course, that's all just my opinion, but we'll see what happens with New Dawn this year as the team seems to be reassessing that whole thing from recent survey questions we've had. But New Dawn wasn't all doom and gloom. There was the fantastic revamping of Hagaboda, adding this crazy wall and a ton of interesting locations to explore making it easily the best city in the entire game to visit now. Then, in October, we got a real surprise of an update with Dark Skies, 
I don't think anyone expected us to get new machines this year, let alone three new machines with the addition of the Firebird. Death From Above is finally a thing in Generation Zero, and they are equally fantastic additions to Generation Zero's growing roster of machines for us to fight and defeat. Dark Skies was easily one of the most radical updates, adding new threats to the skies and new ways to traverse the ground for us with the tuned mopeds and dirt bikes. These new vehicles create so many new opportunities, and the gameplay loop they add of repairing and gathering fuel is a great little addition to the ethos of GZ. It's not always the huge things that make all the difference, and this little bit of immersion with the bikes is just really great to see. We also got New Game Plus, a hugely requested feature from the community that is finally in the game with us having four different game worlds to create and play in. And the last thing from Dark Skies, something I personally love to see happen, the addition of weapon skins. I had actually put forth why weapon skins would be a great addition to the game in a video, so seeing them come to the game is a personal hope of mine totally achieved here. And though it's still in a bit of a fledgling state, weapon skins being a part of Generation Zero has brought a whole new means for us to deck our characters out, and with a bit of work, skins will become a fantastic addition to how we customize our characters in the long run. And then with our most recent update, Dangerous Experiments. This update is a bit of a mixed bag for me, with some great efforts towards streamlining gathering schematics, but it also brought a very poor rebalancing of crafting and some kinda lackluster experimental weapons. The experimentals are unique and fun to use when they work right, but also could have been given a bit more power or oomph to kind of cement them as endgame weapons. And then the crafting, which I really hope will get fixed up in the future, as now it's become an ungodly grind to create stable supplies. But a really good thing to come from Dangerous Experiments was the finalization of the Apple Tree Murders, with Generation Zero's first mission with optional decisions for us to take, either forgiving the murderer or condemning them. A system I'm really excited to see, as it means in the future we may have more missions with optional choices that could be even bigger decisions to make. In between this all, we saw a huge slew of DLC, with 8 packs getting dropped this year. Two base building packs, two utility packs, three weapon packs, and a skin pack to wrap it all up. And I personally am happy with DLC. It creates the opportunity for GZ to create recurrent revenue, prolonging it for the long run, and giving us more stuff to gather and use, really opening up the sandbox elements of Generation Zero. Though I am hoping for more free weapons to appear this year, I think the base game needs quite a bit of loving. But for now, there's no way to say GZ is slim on the weapons you have to choose from. And the biggest thing personally from this year has been the effort to optimize Generation Zero. We've seen a huge amount of bug fixing in between all of these features, and the effort is totally paying off. It's like a juggling game of how much the team can add without totally lighting consoles on fire, and I think the effort is beyond commendable at this point. Sure, we still have some bugs and there are some pain points, but that never removes the effort the developers make. To me at least. 2022 was huge. We saw so many things added and things to do, from new missions to side activities to gameplay loops and new machines to refresh the combat experience. It was an incredible year and all thanks to the team behind it. We wouldn't have had such an impressive year if they hadn't pulled it all together and spent countless hours to get Generation Zero up its mountain of potential. It's damn impressive. So here's to this upcoming year with Generation Zero. It doesn't need to be bigger or better than 2022, but I just hope that the effort can continue, because if we see one or two more years like this, this is going to be such a crazy video game. Anyway, to save myself rambling here, thank you for watching my year in review for 2022 and Generation Zero. Was any part of this year your favorite part? Let me know in the comments down below. But for now, I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.